Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. And in today's video, we're going back to 1983 to open this authenticated sealed box of 1983 tops in search of the great trio of rookies in this set. That's Ryan Sandberg, Wade Boggs, and Tony Gwynn, all three Hall of Famers. And we'll be looking for those cards. A lot of you are familiar with this design because it was featured throughout 2018 Tops as um, they did their 35 year anniversary um, as they do each year. Like, for example, this year we're looking back at 84 Tops with 2019. But here is the bottom of the box. You can see it was authenticated by the Baseball Card Exchange. And I bought this box directly from the Baseball Card Exchange at the National in Chicago. So without further ado, <clears throat> let's get this opened up and check it out. I'm going to have to go kind of carefully here. I don't want to put a big X in the box like I usually do. Just to, uh, I really like to keep these boxes for display purposes. This box has great color and great shape. No soft corners or anything like that. Looks like it was... Uh, Pretty much brand new out of the case. What it would have looked like way back in 1983. So let's open it up and show you what's inside. There's what the packs look like. Blue background, similar, very similar to what we saw when we opened up the box of 1980 tops. Same kind of design. And uh, they were 30 cents. Just checking the price tag there. Back in 1983. Hard to believe I was only two years old when these packs came out. You can win a trip, or you could have won a trip, to the World Series, um, uh, which would have been pretty awesome there. And here is the back of it. So without further ado, let's uh, get to ripping these. The top left stack is going to Chris Wills. I always allow my Patreon patrons to buy into these Throwback Thursdays. It's a nice little way of doing some... Um, participation on the channel here so the rest of those boxes or packs will stay there we got chris wills packs there and let's get to ripping these and see if we can't find the tony gwen wade boggs and ryan sandberg we got brad mills on the back former astros manager there there's the stick of gum the gum's looking good the gum is looking edible actually it's not like a piece of um sugar just caked onto the back of the card. Sometimes it's caked onto the card so bad that I have to like literally spend, I don't know, 10 seconds prying it off. But this is nice. This box looks like it was stored in a nice uh, dry area uh, for the last uh, 36 years or so. No stain on the back of the card. That's good news for everyone in this break. No stains, no gum stains. Very good news. All right. So there's the design. You can see I always like the 83 Tops design. Pretty cool how they have the picture there. Um, kind of like a mug shot of the player along with usually an action photo. This one's not really an action photo of Steve Rogers. But here we go. Let's see what we find and see if we can't find one of those three big rookie cards that we are after. Oscar Gamble there. Don Robinson. Here's a super veteran. Super veteran card of... Lee May, Dickie Thon, and Chet Lemon, Brad Mills from the Expos. All right, pack number two. Brad Mills and Terry Francona go way back to the Expos days. No wonder um, Mills is Francona's bench coach. All right, second pack, we got Steve Carlton, Hall of Famer. That's a nice one. Dennis Eckersley, another Hall of Famer. I should probably also show you the backs of these cards. I like the backs of these cards. Really nice, simple design there. Gives you everything you need. The back of the Topps card. I used to love the back of the Topps cards. Compared to all the other ones, um, I always thought Topps did the best job. Give, gives you their complete major league record. Gives you all of their biographical information. Height, weight, date of birth, all that good stuff. Steve Balboni was a slugger there for a while. Manny uh, Trio. We've got a Steve Trout. Carlton Fisk, he's a Hall of Famer. And Fred Lynn. So two packs down, still no sign of the rookie cards that we're after. But 
It's obviously going to take probably a few packs to find one of them. Oh, that's nice. The gum doesn't stick at all. Just falls right off in the pack. Love it. All right, here's our next pack. Tommy Boggs. That's not the Boggs we're after. We want Wade Boggs. There's Lee Smith. That's a nice second-year card of Lee Smith. Now a Hall of Famer. Congratulations, Lee. One of the uh, great closers. That, speaking of Hall of Famers, Tony La Russa. Hall of Fame manager, Tony La Russa. Bruce Suter, another Hall of Famer. And Danny Heap. Next pack for Chris. I know Chris likes his Cardinals, so let's see if we can pull some Cardinals for you here. Got a Dave Kingman on the back. Dave Kingman had a nice career. 400-plus home runs when it was all said and done. Kent DeColvey, super veteran. Um, 1974, there he is. There he is in 1983. He ended up finishing up with the Phillies, I believe. Had that nice little signed sidewinder motion. Submariner, Gorman Thomas, solid player. And Dave Kingman, there he is. All right, next packs. So we're about halfway through Chris's packs. Got a Cardinals team checklist there, so that's good. Just mention that you like your cards. Jim Palmer's on the back of this particular pack. Also, there's Dave Rigetti. Very, very solid pitcher. Jim Palmer, Hall of Famer. And Sparky Anderson. Wayne Gross. Dale Murphy. Lots of people love Dale Murphy. He was kind of like the National League version of Don Mattingly. Um, an awesome, awesome player in the 80s that never made the Hall of Fame because his peak um, just didn't last long enough, unfortunately. Don Mattingly had some awesome years there in the mid-80s, but his career didn't last long enough. Same thing happened to Dale Murphy. Um, his, um, his prime just was not long enough to get those stats up to be Hall of Fame eligible, I guess, or Hall of Fame worthy in the eyes of the Baseball Writers of America. And there's an Ozzie Smith for Chris. I know he likes that one. Ozzie Smith, of course, his rookie card was with the Padres in 79. We'll be looking for that one in two weeks when we bust open a baseball card exchange authenticated box. Steve Garvey's a good one. 1979 tops. Another Lee Smith. Jim Cott. Three packs left. Still no rookie card of the three that we're after. All right, let's see what we can pull out of this stack. Jim Cott. Bruce Benedict. Um, Jim Rice is a Hall of Famer. Willie Randolph. His rookie card's, what, 77 tops? Would have loved to have picked up a box of 77 tops, but they were $4,000. Some of you might wonder what a box of these costs. Usually you can get a box of these for around $400 if it's an authenticated box, maybe a little less. Bruce Suter. There's also the Michigan test boxes that are floating around. Those are a bit more, like $450 or so, I think. Carl Yastrzemski, Hall of Famer. There's El Presidente, Dennis Martinez. All right, down to the last pack for Chris Wills. Good luck, Chris. That, oh, we got the Gwyn! There he is, Tony Gwynn! Right there. For a second, I was a little worried it wasn't going to happen for you, and you aren't going to get any of them, but we got the Tony Gwynn. Let's get the one touches ready to go. Um, so you're wondering, you might be thinking to yourself, what's a Tony Gwynn rookie card worth? Well, it's a great question. Ungraded, you can usually pick them up for anywhere between, depending on the condition, is very, very important. Um, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 bucks or so. But graded, a graded Tony Gwynn card, looking at eBay recently sold listings, a lot of them are selling for between $600 and $700. If it's a PSA Gem Mint 10, which is um, a perfect card, no flaws at all. Um, and that's what we're going for right here. We're pulling them right out of the pack and trying to get them right into a one-touch so that they can be... Um, sent off by the new owner if you'd like to send it off to PSA and have it graded. So we get this nice and encased here and then I'll show it to all of you. There it is, Tony Gwynn. Check it out. Possible PSA 10? 
It's looking pretty sharp to me. Those corners are looking nice. I hope you send it off. I hope it gets a PSA 10. Here's the back. Nice Tony Gwynn rookie card for Chris Wills. And honestly, that's the uh, that's the best out of the three rookie cards. Looking at P PSA 10 recently sold listings, this is the most valuable. Like I said, $600 to $700. I'll tell you what the Wade Boggs and Ryan Sandberg are going for if we pull them here. So congratulations, Chris. The very last pack of your stack. How about that? Harold Baines, Hall of Famer. And Gaylord Perry, another Hall of Famer. Tom, Tom, Tom Lawless, Mr. Batflip. Guy had a crazy bat flip back in, what was it, 87, I think? All right, so that's it for that stack. We're going to move on now to the top right, which is Jacob R. So we're going to pull that stack out of here, put it off to the side of the box, put your name on the screen. Jacob, I hope you pull one of those trio of rookies. Let's see what we can find here. See if we can find another Tony Gwynn or... Ryan Sandberg or Wade Boggs. Those are the big three of 83 tops. That's why this box is very in demand. Even now, after 36 years, Fergie Jenkins is a Hall of Famer. It's a good card there. Good old Dennis Lamp, Doyle Alexander. A nice career. Steve Bedrosian, Dave Henderson. All these guys had great careers. Just um, didn't really play long enough to be you know, considered an all-time great or Hall of Fame worthy, but lots of former All-Stars and stuff like that sprinkled throughout these packs. All right, next pack for Jacob. Frank Tanan is on the top. Mike Marshall, another guy, had a nice career there. It was good enough to have a starting lineup made of him, and I think it was uh, 86. There's... Don Sutton, Buck Martinez. You guys know him if you're Blue Jays fans. Announcer nowadays, Jim Bibby. Willie McGee. That's a nice one, Willie McGee. If I'm not mistaken, that is a Willie McGee rookie card, 1983 tops. There it is. Very nice. Willie McGee rookie. Not one of the uh, kind of like top cards in the set, but still worth about a buck. There he is getting back to first base. I guess the picture could have been cropped a little better, but... And again, it was 1983. All right, next pack. A little bit of wax on this one, but luckily it's just it's just Jim Gantner that's taking the wax stain there. All right, let's see what we have in this pack. Goose Gossage, a.k.a. Rich. There he is with the nice mustache. Tom Seaver, super veteran. Going back to 67. It's a nice rookie card if you can get your hands on that one. Brett Butler, Herbeck, Tom Bernanski had some good seasons. Then Jim Gantner with the wax stain on the back. All right, next pack up. Let's see what we find in this one. I see Kent DeColby there. Pedro Guerrero, another guy with some nice home run totals. Sparky Lyle. Cincinnati Reds, Russ Nixon, Concepcion, Nettles, and Hendrick. Next up. None of the big rookies yet for Jacob, but as you saw in the last stack, sometimes the last pack has that little bit of extra magic. There's Valenzuela. His rookie card, of course, is 81 tops. Also has a card in 81 tops traded. Here is Mr. October, Reggie Jackson. That's a nice-looking card. Hall of Famer, a oh, couple checklists in a row. That would make me mad if I was a kid. I used to hate getting checklists. Kind of feel ripped off. But somebody had to get them if they were in the packs. Vaughn Hayes, another Reggie Jackson, his all-star card. Ricky Henderson, that is a beautiful looking card. Oh, these cards are very sharp looking. Love getting fresh cards out of the pack. Pretty awesome that there's still boxes out there that you can buy that are pack fresh from so long ago. Of course, you do have to pay a bit more nowadays because it's all supply and demand. There's not that many of these still out there. I mean, you could go to buy 1989 Tops boxes for usually 5 to $10 a piece easily because there's still so many floating around. 
but not 1983, unfortunately. All right, here we go. Next pack. Joe Necro's in there, along with Ned Yost. You guys know Ned Yost if you are a Royals fan, obviously. There's Dave Parker, nicknamed the Cobra. Just short of being a Hall of Famer. Has really great career numbers. Eddie Murray, he's a Hall of Famer. One of the best um, switch hitters of all time. Power bat there, Eddie Murray. Carney Lansford, you guys will like him if you're Oakland Athletics fans. Carney Lansford. Two packs left for Jacob R. Getting a little short on time here to pull one of those three rookies that we're looking for. Got one out of the first stack. I'd like to get one out of each stack if possible. It's Mike Morgan. He played for, what, 13 different teams? Really bounced around all over the place. Earl Weaver. It's a good one if you like managers. And there's the last pack right there for Jacob R. For that top right stack. Let's see if we can find a Boggs or Sandberg or a Gwynn. Fingers crossed. Here we go. Not seeing one yet. Dusty Baker's in there. But no Gwyn Boggs or Sandberg. So thank you very much, Jacob, for buying into this box break. Next up, bottom left, this stack right here. Going to Brad B. So good luck, Brad. Got Mike Witt on the back. Always remember him for pitching, pitching for the... Um, oh, there we go. Ryan Sandberg right in the middle of the pack. Brad B with the hit right off the bat in your first pack. Very nice. Ryan Sandberg. So we got two out of the three. That's not bad. We still have half the box left to go. What's a Ryan Sandberg PSA 10 rookie card go for? Well, glad you asked. A Ryan Sandberg PSA rookie card from 83 Tops. If you look at eBay recently sold listings... Usually is going for right around $400 if it's a PSA 10. So that means all the corners are super sharp. That doesn't have any defects. It's a gem mint 10. It's a perfect card. And that's what we're going for. So we're sleeving this up. Actually, top loading it. Not top loading, but one touching it. There it is. Ryan Sandberg. You can see, uh, check out the corners there. It's a nice looking card. I'm trying to give it a real hard look over. I, there's a slight little bump right. You see it right there. So I don't know if that would be probably not quite a PSA 10, but definitely a PSA 9 at least. I don't know if they would. I don't know. You really got to look to find that bump. But that is a beautiful looking card. Ryan Samber. Congratulations, Brad B. So we've got two out of the three rookies that we were after at Again, if you can get it graded as a 10, it comes back at 10, it's a $400 card. In raw condition, just out at a card show, I don't know, $10 or so. Again, condition really, really matters. Um, that's the difference between paying $5 for that card and probably like $15 or $20. All right. Very nice for Brad. Congratulations. So we got two out of three. Let's go on. Now we just have to find the Boggs. This Wade Boggs also hiding out in here. I hope so. There's Dave Dravecki. Unfortunately, had to have his arm amputated, ending his career. Bob Walk, Pirates announcer, won the uh, well, he was on the World Series champion Philadelphia Phillies in 1980, his rookie season. Silly name for a pitcher, Bob Walk. I'm sure he. I heard that a million times throughout his career. All right. Next pack. Got these cool little, I guess, scratch-off cards, which um, we haven't really taken a look at yet. But you rub off all the spots to see how each player batted. Three of the same hit instantly wins. We're not going to rub those off now. We'll let, I don't know if any of the people that own these cards now want to rub them off at their house or not. There's a Steve Garvey in there. 
All right, next up, pack number three for Brad. There's nine packs in each stack, as there are um, 36 packs per box, 36 times four, or 36 divided by four is nine, so nine packs per stack. Willie Wilson, always liked, um, Willie Wilson wasn't a bad player. Lots of steals. Uh, Tony Pena, great catcher. He used to really be kind of nonchalant behind the plate. There's another Lee Smith. Almost basically just sit down. Looks like he was just kind of like lounging around and playing some video games where he would sit and he would still throw guys out basically from a sitting position. Billy Martin, this gum just looks so good, by the way. I am tempted to take a small bite of it. Thirty six year old gum still taste like I remember Frank Robinson. The only difference is the gum doesn't form into gum, it turns basically in, into a powder, mixes with your spit, and then it just disappears. So basically you end up, I don't know, drinking the gum as it mixes in with your spit. Sounds pretty gross, but the taste is still there. That tops taste. George Brett. Oh, I'll probably get really sick now, but I've actually eaten the gum before and been okay. Jim Palmer. I think if you take a small piece, small bite, you'll be fine. Wouldn't recommend eating it. Don't try it at home. This gum, though, just, it looks so dry. Like, that's why I tried it out. So dry that it's not sticking to the cards at all. So, Tim Raines is in there. He's a Hall of Famer. Another Kent Colby. You've seen that card a few times already. Well, Brad already got his rookie card hit. There's a Goose Gossage. He's got two packs left to find another one. We'll see if he can find the bog to be... This would be a great box. If we can find the box, too, I feel like it's already a win because we got two out of the three. Man, if we opened this box and got zero out of three, that would be a disaster. Cal Ripken, that's a beautiful card. like that one a lot. Cal Ripken Jr. rookie card, of course, is 1982 tops the year before. He's on there with two other prospects. 82 tops traded is the more valuable of those two cards. Tom Seaver. Mike Marshall. And Reggie Jackson, that's our third Reggie that we've pulled tonight. And here is the very last pack, 1983 tops, directly from the baseball card exchange via the National. You guys probably saw me purchasing this box in my National videos. Gary Carter, Tony Armas, Dave Winfield, and lots of Hall of Famers, Fergie Jenkins again. Wood Mosby, and that is it for Brad Stack. So you got the Ryan Sandberg rookie card. Very, very nice. And now the very last stack, that good old bottom right stack. That's going to our friend Jonathan H., good friend of the channel. Good luck, Jonathan H. I know you love Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan's obviously in this set, but I don't think you'd turn down the chance at Getting a Gwyn, Boggs, or Sandberg. So, personally, I'm hoping for a Boggs just so we can say that we got all three out of the box, which would be pretty crazy. Let's see what we find here. That's not the Boggs we were hoping for. Tommy Boggs. Steve Carlton. Hall of Famer. Pack number two. Get these wrappers out of the way. Probably not visually pleasing to see a bunch of wrappers all slopped onto the screen. Charlie Huff only has a few wrinkles in that picture. Dave Steeb. Dennis Eckersley, Hall of Famer again. So we'll start to see some repeats here every now and again from the first three stacks. I mean, since we've already, I mean, this is. What are we on now? Pack number like 29 or so. So yeah, after opening 29 packs of 
any box, you're going to start to see a couple repeats. I'm just hoping we see some new cards that we haven't seen yet. I don't think we've pulled a Nolan Ryan yet. That'd be pretty nice to get one of those for Jonathan H. Harold Baines, Bruce Suter. Oh, there he is, Tony Gwynn. So two Tony Gwynns. Congratulations, Jonathan H. Let me just put those down and get a one-touch for you for that one. Again, that is the most expensive card in the set. The most valuable card in the set, PSA-wise, is the Tony Gwynn. And Jonathan H., you just got him. So two Tony Gwynns out of this box. So a $400 box potentially could turn into, um, I don't know, $1,500 if these all come back. Um, I think that Sandberg might be a nine, but these two Tony Gwynns come back at 10. We'll take a look at these. In a second here, get this, um, carefully pick this bad boy up, get him right in there. Don't want to handle the Gwyn any more than I have to there. Congratulations, Jonathan H., that bottom right stack. All right, so sharp corners on the Gwyn. There's the back of it. Let me try to center this a little bit better in there. Push it up just a tad. Don't want to pinch the bottom. There we go. Tony Gwynn went two for four with an RBI and three runs in the 11 4 win versus the Mets since July 23rd, 1982. He only hit 289. Say only, yeah. 289 for Tony Gwynn is like hitting 200 for any regular player. Man, this guy was one of the best hitters of our generation. Very, very nice card there. Congratulations, Jonathan H. John getting the Tony Gwynn rookie card. And you still have six packs left to go. And you still have a few cards left in this stack. But they're commons. All right, next pack. All right, this has been a great box. So sorry to Wade Boggs fans out there that have hope, or came here hoping for Wade. We haven't been able to find him. I hope we find him. That would be pretty crazy if we find... All three plus an additional bonus. Oh, look at this! Another Tony Gwynn! This is a Tony Gwynn box! Jonathan H. Amazing! All right, I gotta put that down for a second. We gotta get another one touch for Jonathan H. right now. Holy cow! What the heck, Jonathan H.? Quite possibly the best 1983 Tops box ever. At least uh, this is a lot better than I was expecting. Three Tony Gwynn rookie cards? You've got to be kidding me here. All right. Let's get that. Didn't think I'd be one-touching so many Tony Gwynns. I thought maybe one. Maybe one of each. I had three one-touches available. I do have some other cards here, one touch. I can just take the cards out. But check that one out. Congratulations, Jonathan H., Really, really awesome pulling two Tony Quinn rookie cards. What was that, back-to-back -back packs? You've got to be kidding me. That's some good luck there. You deserve it, Jonathan H. Great channel, by the way. Check out Jonathan H.'s channel. Really awesome dude. Great friend of the channel. Thank you so much for all the support you've uh, shown my channel, Jonathan H., over the past few months. I almost feel like celebrating by eating a, another stick of gum here. All right, let's see. Maybe we'll find that Wade Boggs now. I'll just keep talking about Wade Boggs. I feel like I was talking about him before. And then um, all the Wade Boggs talk makes Tony Gwynn appear. Bruce Suter. Four packs left to go. On the back, we have Jim Kern. There's Tommy Boggs. Not Wade Boggs, but Tommy Boggs. Steve Carlton. Raleigh Fingers. Rick Monday, American hero Rick Monday. Saved a flag from being burned at Dodger Stadium. All right, three packs left for Jonathan H. So no matter what happens in these three packs, this Throwback Thursday was a huge success in my in my book. Pulling three Gwyns and a Sandberg. 
Fergie Jenkins. I think that's the third Fergie that we've seen. And there's the Concepcion All-Star card. Two packs left on this Throwback Thursday. And we've got Gary Maddox there, Mike Marshall. Reggie Jackson, our fourth Reggie Jackson, Dave Winfield. Gary Gaetti. Don Baylor, Phil Necro. Necro's a Hall of Famer. And that takes us to our final pack. No matter what happens, Jonathan H., a huge winner tonight. All right. Steve Kemp. Goose Gossage. Tom Seaver. Some Hall of Famers there. Pedro Guerrero. And Bake McBride is the last one. So, no Wade Boggs in the box, but... Honestly, that box was a really, really big uh, win there. Three, not one, not two, but three Tony Gwynns. There's Jonathan H.'s Tony Gwynns. And you cannot forget this one over here. That is um, Chris Will's Tony Gwynn. We'll keep them separate. We don't want to mix them up. But um, So three Tony Gwynn rookie cards in this same box is pretty crazy. You also had a Ryan Sandberg rookie card coming out of this box. The only thing we missed out on was uh, Wade Boggs, but I'm not too worried about that with all these other rookies that we pulled out of here. Um, thank you so much for watching this episode of Throwback Thursday, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment down below if you'd like to. Uh, next week on Throwback Thursday, we're going to be opening this bad boy right here. It's a 1984 Donruss authenticated box looking for Don Mattingly's rookie card. And the week after that... We have this one, 1979 Tops. And we'll probably do this one in the live stream because that one's really going to be fun. Looking for the Ozzy Smith rookie card, which legend has it that it is sold for $35,000 in a PSA 10. It's virtually impossible to find a nice Ozzy Smith-centered PSA 10 card, but we're going to try it in this box of 79 Tops in two weeks. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Please subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your night. Good night, everybody.